Privet comrade Steve Combe here. I found it on the charger, so this can be like a little weird angle here. But that's that's how I'm gonna have to do it. Um is gonna start this video apologizing for not having made videos in a while. But I realized I'm not I'm not going to do that. Um what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to stop promising that I'm gonna have a video every day and then apologizing for not having the video every day. Because that seems to be the cycle I'm in. Say hi, Remy. That just seems to be my cycle. Hi, Dante. What are you doing? Um, so I'm just going to stop promising that I'm going to make a video every day, because apparently I'm not. <laughs> I am going to promise that I'm going to try you as often as possible. Perhaps once a week. Maybe every other week. I really hope not. Say hi. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing in here? No. But, um... My reasoning today is um, not so good. As you know, I have my rats. If you don't know that, then I have rats. <laughs> no, I'm very attached to my rats, as well as I'm attached to any of my pets. Um, hey, Remy. One of my rats has gotten severely sick and possibly doesn't have long for this world. I guess for me, what? I know, I know. You can tell I'm upset. Um, I've been caring for her as much as I can, but she's not doing too good. Um, she is doing better since I started helping her, but it's hard to tell if she's just faking good, you know? What, Remy? But, um, what happened there is horrific, um, is slightly my fault, but almost completely my roommate's fault, former roommates, as you know. I'm not supposed to delve into them, as you've known with that one video, but, uh, essentially, to put it short, you know how we had the really bad maggots. If you didn't know that, the house was an inhabit inhabitable, I think is the correct word, yes, um, due to severe maggots and stuff in the sink because we could not wash dishes because there was no water because they didn't pay the water bill. So you know you know how that goes. Um, or maybe they did pay the water bill. I'm not supposed to say anything. But, uh, so there's severe maggots, and it was bad enough that I had this huge thing of bleach, like, that big... Probably, like, that big. You're supposed to water it down, like, one part bleach to two parts water. I used pure bleach to the point my eyes stung. I had to replace my clothes because they were covered. They had all these bleach stains. I was in work clothes, which wasn't smart. Um, my shoes had stain marks all over them. You know, bleach spots. Uh, the whole house smelled horrible after that. Um, I had to replace my contacts. But uh, essentially, you know, what it was is that we didn't know we had maggots, or at least I didn't know we had maggots, uh, until I remo moved one of the dishes, because I was getting ready to move, so I was going to pack some things up, and saw that they were coated, like, dripping in maggots underneath. Everything there, uh, anything plastic, I didn't even attempt to save. It was beyond saving. Some metal things I saved, some pots and pans, but believe me, they went through a lot of bleaching in, like, five, six wash cycles. Like, I made sure these things were clean. Um, but yeah, so essentially whenever the maggots didn't have a place to live, they had to find a new place. And, um, where to start on this? There, there was a lot of flies around, you know, from the maggots, you know, that's their adult cycle and flies lay eggs. Well, I destroyed their home in the sink and, um, I had a rat who, you can start getting where this is going. She's had a big growth pretty much all her life on her on her chest, and it it's not something to be, not something serious. People get them to the vets and they remove them. We get to find a specialty; it's insanely expensive, and very very hard to find someone who will see a rat, and they will come back. There's no guarantee they'll leave, and it's insanely common. Rats get them all the time. They're of no threat to them whatsoever. If it was a cancerous, I suppose, but they're usually not. 
and they just get growths, and that's just what happens to the rat. I mean, it's some rats get them six, seven times. Some rats never get them. It's, but it's a really common thing. Almost all of them tend to get them, and it's of no harm. So she's had a growth since she was pretty much born. Stop knocking my camera. Or since we got her. She got it the second day we had her. She started growing it, which was common. Um, but the fact that she got it so long, young, they usually don't get it until about a year or two old. She was maybe eight weeks old, maybe six weeks. She was very, very young. Um, stop knocking my camera over, Dante. Dante, stop it. Stop it. I know, stop it. I love you too. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to pick up my phone. I think I have enough battery to... I have 16%. It'll probably be okay. But, um... Yes, Dante, I love you too. But, so, the flies are rain and such, and, um... But she's had this growth for a long, long time, and she's pretty much always had them. Uh, I guess they're hollow. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Um, but she's always had this growth, and it's gotten bigger and bigger, but, it, you know, they typically do. And it had gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, like, pretty fast after leaving the apartments but they do grow with stress and it was again a very hostile place and rats can feel the the aura essentially if the place doesn't feel safe they don't feel safe themselves which is common for any animal i'm sorry the phone's shaking i'm emotional my cat keeps headbutting me dante stop it dante what are you doing hmm 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 hi remy you're being very good and patient good good cat <laughs> But, um, so I didn't think anything of it. I just thought it was growing really fast, which means she probably wouldn't have too much longer to live. Which wasn't even something at, like, um, she would die from the tumor. It was, because it wasn't a tumor, it's a growth. But, um, which I guess is the same thing. It wasn't even that she would die from that. It's just that I had one who did die. And it was simply because she couldn't move. They got so big she couldn't move. And I guess that's the only reason you would need to remove them. But I didn't, I didn't remove it simply because she was over three years old. She was almost four, and they're not supposed to live past two. She was hairless, which they get sick really easy, and it's really hard to do anything for them because they have so many allergies and stuff. Uh, so she was old and hairless, and there was no vets in my clinic, in, anywhere near my town, that but I see a rat. And... The closest one was like five, six hours away, and they wanted like $2,000 to even see her. Better yet, the surgery cost. So it definitely wasn't going to happen, and I felt really bad for that. But the thought process was, and I hate to say it this way, she will cost me $20. And she lived a long life. There was no guarantee she would live through surgery. I mean, especially at that age. I mean, I, I really hated to say that, but um, it didn't seem to bug her at all. Until just like two days, she boom, boom. She's really bad one day, the next day she woke up dead. Or I woke up and she was dead. So it was uh, very quick with her. She didn't seem bad before. But, um, so I think it was more old age that took her than movement. But, so this rat's been growing really fast. So we thought, you know, maybe she may not have very long. Maybe movement will get restricted. Um, she wasn't gonna live very long probably. But my brother got her. Um, his rat was dying of old age. And so he got another rat for her to play with. What do you want? Stop it. Yes, thank you. Uh, cause it was really it was a really lonely rat. My brother couldn't play with it as much with that, with work and stuff, and it was very old, as we said. Uh, so he got another rat for her to play with, and this there was this rat. She started getting the tumor and everything else, and the growth, and um, well, his rat eventually died, and she passed away very sweetly, from what I hear. I don't know. But basically, he contacted me saying, you know, I got this rat to help her. I don't really have time to deal with one rat. Um, he's like, I don't have time to deal with... He's like, I have time to feed and change their cage and stuff, but I don't have enough time to play with them and give them attention. And, um, and, this, and he's like, I don't want to go out and buy another rat, you know. He's like, I know you have rats. Would you be willing to take her? Now, at the time, I already had four rats. My cage recommends three. So I had way too many rats. But... Dante, I'm trying to do a video. Dante, Dante, stop it. But I was like, yeah, I'm not going to let this poor rat be alone. Sure, go ahead. And to be fair, he really wasn't treating her very well. 
And it wasn't probably his fault too much, but like the cage wouldn't get changed very much or things like that. And I mean, he was very busy with work and stuff. He had work and school and all that, just like I did. Um, but if he doesn't want a rat, I'm not going to force him to have that rat, you know? And you can't take it back to the pet store or anything. <laughs> but um, someone must have an early morning work. Oh, it's 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 6.20, 6.20 a.m. It's already 6.20? Wow. That would explain why my grandma's up. I haven't gone to bed yet. So by the time you see this, it's probably going to be 7, 7.30 in the morning. That sounds about right. Um, but yeah, so I took in the rat. Uh, she got along great with him. Oh my gosh, she started playing and rolling around. Like they, they loved each other. And so I, I took her in. But um, the growth got really big, as I mentioned, after leaving the roommate's house. It seemed to stress and the fact that she was it had been slowly growing anyway. Um... Well, I noticed one day, it, we'd had smell issues for a while, which I guess I should have assumed, but it had been stinking, and I kept changing the cage, I kept changing the hammocks, the beddings, the, I would make sure, I would watch, make sure they were grooming each other, like, I was trying to make sure that, what the smell was, you know, I tried air fresheners, and everything, I couldn't figure out what the smell was, and we kept looking, 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 and then about a few days ago, probably about two days ago, I was giving them some treats, and as I held, you know, I was putting them through the cage, and they usually grab them and walk off. Uh, this one stood on her hind legs to grab it, and I noticed her whole side, where her growth is, because it, it had gotten so big, it's literally her entire, like, neck down is the growth, which is really bad. It had been cut open, it looked like, and it looked like organs were spilling out, which terrified me. It looked like intestines or something. I was terrified. I was so sure this rat was going to die. Any second. I flipped out. Uh, I separated her. I was like crying, crying mess. And I scared her because she was like, what's going on? Why are you freaking out? And the smell is coming from her because she's open wound leaking guts. And it's decaying flesh and everything else. It was smelled. It literally smelled the worst smell I've ever smelled. And it's gotten slightly better, but not by much. Um, So I looked looked it up, what was going on, I got my friend that's an actual vet to look at it too. Well, she's a retired vet, but you know. Uh, and she said those were definitely maggot holes. The wounds were maggot holes, where maggots had literally dug through her flesh and laid eggs. So likely um, the flies or something like that. Uh, what she says probably happened is that they were roughhousing, because rats were really roughhousing. And so she probably got a scratch or something. And since maggots were already in the house horrifically, they easily could get to her, and did, and laid eggs, which is why she grew so fast. And now there was holes because they were digging their way out. And so the, all those things that look like organs were actually maggots, all those little bitty worms. So it literally looked like a giant ball of intestines. I've cleaned out maybe a quarter of it. It just keep it. Just, I, I keep finding more and more and more, and I don't know where they're coming from. I mean, they're all coming from her, obviously, but it's like, where are you fitting all these maggots? And I'm helping her the best I can, doing all sorts of clean, cleaning treatments. I have to be really careful, because a lot of chemicals and stuff used to treat humans, like iodine and peroxide, are severely poisonous to rats and actually melt their skin. So I'm doing extremely watered down, but then they're not strong enough to kill the maggots. So it's a big fight there for what to do, you know, and I can't put her... I can't sedate her, because obviously I don't have the tools for that, and there's no clinic nearby, obviously, or anything else. And again, there's the money issue. She was a free rat, um, which sounds so heartless, uh, even to me, but I don't have thousands of dollars to spend on someone I didn't even pay for. But I'm t taking care of her. I mean, my family's like, you've already spent over $50 on medications for her, and nothing's working. She... you. You know, like just put her in a field somewhere or something. Like, you know, you've spent way too much money on this rat. You know she's not going to last long. Stop getting... You're getting so attached to someone that you haven't even had more than, like, a month or two. But she's my baby. You know, they're all my babies. I'm not going to let them die. Um, I have her separated right now. For, simply for easier access. Because I don't want her getting hurt by them. If they're roughhousing again. And um, I want to keep her in an area I can grab her easily and do like the next treatment. 
Uh, I've been doing iodine treatments and stuff, but you can only do those once every 12 hours at most because of how severe it is to their skin. And it's extremely watered down. It's like 3%. So it's doing almost nothing, but it's something. I don't know. It's getting like one or two out at a time, which really isn't very much. But I can't sedate here and get a whole bunch out because, you know, I don't have that stuff, nor can I do it. Uh, I've tried children's ibuprofen, baby, like infant ibuprofen, which is, I looked up certain doses and stuff, which rats can have, and um, I've been doing that, but she doesn't like it. She won't take it. I've tried shoving it down her throat. She won't take it. She had it welled up in her cheeks once, and as soon as I put the syringe away, she spit in my face. I tried chewable ibuprofen. She licked it. It tasted horrible to her. She walked off. I tried crunching up into her... Into her um, applesauce today and I haven't checked to see if she ate that finally but I'm trying to do something for the pain originally it was for some sort of sedation so I could do something but I know that's not going to work now and I need something for the pain because she's just she's not doing good she's still she was still trying to play up until today now she looks like pure hell she's looks like she's in so much agony <coughs> Sorry, uh, I think it's all the chemicals in the air from cleaning and stuff. Mm. Poor baby. I couldn't even get her to eat any crackers, which, if you know anything about her, she will, like, rip crackers from your hands. Like, she loves them. I never realized I never said which rat this was. This is Sugar Plum. Um, I don't know if I ever didn't... I didn't, probably didn't show her to you guys, but Sugar Plum was my newer one. Um, she's a black and white one. Or she's more of a brown and white, but she's just... Sweetheart, she jumps in your arms. She's talking and talking and singing all night. Like, she's a happy rat. But she's not talking anymore. And she looks very sad. She cried and cried for a few hours today. And there's nothing I could do. I could give her more pain meds, but I can't overdose on that. And then she wasn't eating them anyway. And I'm like, I don't know what to do for you, baby. You know? Even putting her down at the vet would be almost $1,000. Probably more than that. And I'd have to find a vet, you know, too. But my other rats have taken into it account. Java, my little fatty, she's been stuffing her face like crazy. Whereas Chai, um, my little white one, you know, has been refusing to eat. And if you know, that's typically the two reactions to depression. You, you stuff your face or you just lay it around and don't eat. And I've experienced both of those, you know. Um, my cats have been pretty depressed. Um, Remy doesn't seem to be too much. I don't think he kn cares too much. It's more if he knows we're upset and he's trying to figure out what's going on. Dante, my little baby here, has been freaking out. He's been refusing to eat his treats. He's been only eating like one or two food pieces at a, at a time, enough to like keep him alive. Um, he's just been laying in bed all the time with me. He's never been very social, but he's he's really clingy right now. He's just like, you know, wanting constant attention, which he usually doesn't like any attention. So you can tell he's he's pretty upset, or can at least tell that I'm upset. And he loves the rats, which is weird for people, but he actually would play with them when they're out of the cage. He'd lay around, they'd lay on top of them. He'd talk to them through their cage. He'd just look at them and talk and squeak, meow, 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 and they'd squeak back at him. It was really cute. I'm probably speaking really fast right now, but um, so those are his babies. And... I don't know. Uh, that's probably my biggest thing right now is that I don't know how long she's going to make it. Um, I don't know if what I'm doing is even helping. I, again, I've spent like 50 bucks on her at this point. And it's not about the money, obviously. This is an animal's life. But I feel like I'm not doing any good whatsoever for her. I feel like I'm doing more harm than good at this point. And I don't know what to do. Um, just waiting it out, I suppose. And I usually do a few, I usually talk about a few things in each video, but I think now I'm going to do one. So that will keep me to make more videos, you know, in that way. So it's not like, oh, and also this happened today, and also this happened. I may mention tomorrow, be like, something happened yesterday, or something like that. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll make me do more videos, or maybe it'll just make me not mention things, and I'll be behind with you guys. I'm not sure yet, but... um We'll see. I did attempt to decorate my apartment, um, which I just I just said I wasn't going to just talk about other other things, but um, 
rats, yeah. But the rats are doing okay. Um, they're pretty depressed, that much is obvious. Um, the cats are pretty depressed. I bought them a bunch of toys to distract them. They don't really... We use one of them, kind of. Remy does. But Dante doesn't really touch any of them. He walks around them. It's just... They're sad. They're sad right now. And they don't know what to do to feel better. And I get that. I get that feeling. Um, I don't know. This is my baby, you know? I haven't had it that long, but it was sugar plum. Little sugar plum. If she goes, I probably will get another rat. I don't want that to sound heartless, but I maybe wait a little bit, at least a few days, maybe a week or two. Because uh, I know the rats, they're used to having someone else there. And they'll be pretty depressed. Like, I mentioned, yeah, the cage is only meant for, like, two or three, and I have five now, but... Um, I am trying to get a bigger cage. It's just really hard to find one. And it's more of, you know, I'm, I think they, I think they want someone else to be there with them. And I don't get to play with them as much as they, as they need either. So I'm trying to get them more friends and more toys. You know, they're supposed to play an hour outside their cage a day and I don't have that to offer them. Because I have cats running around. Before they were in my bedroom so I could just close the door and the cats would be outside and they'd run around the room. Now I'm like, what do I, what do I do? Do I just like lock the cats up in the bedroom and let them run around? Because they're in the living room now. But I'm like, then I have to block everything because the kitchen's open. I have to block under the fridge. I'd have to block this. I'd block this. I'd block all my cables. I don't know. How I'm gonna do it. I guess put them in a little, the little carrier case and bring them into my room and then lock them up that way. I don't know. I think I'll probably have to do that. But well, they're in the dining room. Not really a living room, but it's all kind of connected. Um, like, see, it's kind of connected. The floor is a mess. Um, but, so maybe I'll just... But I put them there because it's where the wood floor is. <laughs> and it's a lot easier to clean them up on a wood floor because they, they make a mess because they're, they're animals. They make messes. Usually bedding and stuff messes. And... It's really hard to vacuum a bed egg. <sighs> Depending on what type you have, you either have wood, you know, cedars, pines, things like that, or you have, like, paper, newspapers and um, things like that, which I usually have paper. But um, we switched to wood because wood's supposed to cover up the smell better. And paper's supposed to build up more smell and stuff like that. Which, again, we couldn't figure out what the smell was, so we thought maybe it was the bedding type, and we changed that. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to the old type now, since I know what it is, but... Maybe I'll make a little corner that has the old type, because they, they like... I don't want them, like... They don't like sleeping on the rough wood. Would you? I wouldn't. Because they tend to, like, cut up on their hammocks, which that's what the hammocks are for. But I think they would like some soft. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I wasn't tired at all two minutes ago when I, but now I'm like exhausted. Mm. I think it's more of mental exhaustion than physical. I'm just been so stressed about my baby. Oh my poor baby. I mean, I'm gonna check on her. Just see, so you guys have some sort of idea of what's going on. And plus, I haven't heard from her in a while. I want to make sure she's still kicking. Hey, sugar plum. Hi, what you doing? You okay? You sleeping? Okay. She's just sleeping. She hasn't ate her applesauce, which I told her I mixed the pain meds with. Eat your applesauce, sweetie. And again, she loves treats and applesauce and all that stuff, so it makes me really... She's not eating, which is not a good sign at all, obviously. I don't know guys, I'm doing the best I can right now. I'm freaking out about her, but there's not much I can do in that situation. Um, well, as you notice, I'm wearing, I'm wearing piercings. I didn't have work today, uh, which is the only time I don't wear, 
the only time I wear piercings when I don't have work. But, um, I don't know. I'll try to keep you guys updated, but she may make a recovery. I don't want to assume the worst, but it doesn't look like she will last very long. Well, TF Quam signing off. Bye.